Hi there, Thiago Alves here. I'm the creator of the OpenPLC project. And today you're going to learn how to program a tiny Arduino Uno using a PLC language called Ladder Logic. Ladder Logic is a powerful tool, and thanks to OpenPLC, you can now use that powerful language even on cheap and small microcontrollers like an Arduino board. But besides just programming this board with ladder logic, you also see today how to have this board connected to the world using Modbus. Modbus is a powerful protocol widely used on in industry that helps PLC and other devices talk to each other. But before we jump in, I would just like to thank our sponsors that made this video possible. If you enjoyed this kind of content, please consider subscribing to our channel and also joining our sponsors program on Patreon. To program an Arduino board with OpenPLC, it's actually a very simple process. I'll demonstrate this on Windows, but the procedure is the same on any other platform. First step is to just launch OpenPLC editor here. Now that the editor was launched, I will just start a new project. I need to select a folder to store my project. I'll just put it on desktop. Projects on OpenPLC are actually folders, not files. So I need to create a new blank folder here for my project. I'll call it my first project. All right, I open the blank folder and I select it to create my new project. Then I need to create a program for that project. I'll call it Blinky. <clears throat> And then I need to select the language I want to program this on and I will select LD for ladder diagram. All right, I have everything set for my first project. And by the name of it, you probably already know that we're going to do the most basic hello world of any project, which is to blink an LED, right? Uh, and this is in fact very simple. There is a tutorial on OpenPLC that demonstrates how to do this here in the Blink example. But let's build ours from scratch. So to Blink an LED, the first thing I need to do is to create a variable that will be our LED blinking. I can create a variable clicking on this green plus icon here. Let's give it a name. I'll call it uh, Blinky LED. And then the type of this variable is gonna be Boolean because the LED can be either true or false. It's either on or off, right? And then after we'll fill out the location point here, but for now, let's just leave it blank. Let's start adding our diagram here. So for ladder diagrams, we need to add two basic components, the left and right power rails. I'd like to start by adding a very long power rail with like 50 pins. And then I just position it on the left here. And then I create another power rail with another 50 pins and I put it on the right. Okay. This is good enough. I just see if they are aligned and they are very good. Okay. So now I can start writing my ladder diagram on these two power rails to create a blinky LED. All I have to do is to add a contact for my blinky LED and I call it negated because it is going to get the opposite state of the variable. So if blinky LED is off, this contact will be closed. If blink LED is on, this contact will be open, right? And then I'll just adjust the position here and connect. Now, if I just add another coil of the same blinky LED on the other side and connect them together, I have my oscillator. If we examine how this ladder logic works, at the beginning of the cycle, blinky LED is off. So the power flow will just flow through this contact and activate the blinky LED variable itself, turning it on. On the next cycle, because the blink LED is on, this contact will be opened, therefore turning off the blinky LED. And this step will just continue over and over and over again. 
let's just simulate this and see how that works. All right, so you see that the blinky LED is blinking. It looks a little erratic, but um, it's just because it's blinking so fast that uh, we're not able to actually see it in real time. If I take a look at the graph here, I'll see that the blink LED is actually going up and down super fast, right? And what's the reason? Why is it blinking so fast? Because it's turning on and off at every PLC cycle. If we take a look at the resources here, we see that this PLC cycle is 20 milliseconds. So it's turning on and off every 20 milliseconds. If I increase this interval to something like 500 milliseconds, for example, I'll see that this blink will go a lot slower. Let's see. And then you see that it's actually going every 500 milliseconds. Right? There you go. But that's not exactly what we want to achieve. It's better to keep our PLC cycle very fast because we might be interested in doing some other things pretty quick and add timers to delay the turning on and off of this blinky LED. So let's just erase this line here and add two blocks. First one is going to be a T on block and I'll just make it bigger and I will connect it here. And I'll create a copy of it and I'll change it to be a T off instead. And I'll connect them together. And these two timers are gonna delay the rising edge and the falling edge of my blinky LED. Right? And in reality it doesn't matter the order, you can start with a T off and end with a T on or you can start with a T on and end with a T off. The combination of both timers is what triggers the magic. Then I'll just add a variable to express the delay amount that I want for this uh, transition. So I'll just put um, 500 milliseconds just like before. I'll increase this variable a little bit. Add one here on the PT of the timer. Add another here. Just copy and paste. PT of the other timer. So let's simulate this diagram again and see how that goes. All right, that's a lot better, right? The PLC cycle is going fast, but now I have a delay that transitions my blinking LED in, in the period that I want, all right? Every 500 milliseconds. Very good. So now let's make this happen on our Arduino board. What we want is to get that built-in LED to blink just like this blink LED on the simulation here. For this, we need to associate our blinky LED variable to the built-in LED pin on my Arduino board. The way to know which pin is that is to go to the documentation on the OpenPLC website. Here in the documentation section, you will find information on the runtime about the physical addressing. Here you have all the boards that OpenPLC officially supports. Right, so here, here is the Uno and the Leonardo and all the other similar uh, form factors. So for the built-in LED, we know that on the Arduino Uno, that's pin 13, right? Pin 13 is associated with QX0.3. So that's the variable we need to associate uh, for our pin 13 on the Arduino Uno board, okay? So I can go here and type qx0.3 and that's all I have to do to create a blinky LED example for the Arduino board. 
to burn the OpenPLC runtime on my board, I just need to click on this Arduino icon here. But before we do that, we first need to connect our board to the computer and figure out which COM port number it is associated with. I think that the easiest way to do this is to go to the start menu on device manager where you can see all the devices that are plugged into your computer. And then you just expand the COM ports here and connect your Arduino to the USB port. When you do that, your Arduino board should appear right here. And I see that on my case, Arduino Uno is connected to COM29. Can safely close this now and then compile the project for the Arduino board. All right, here I can select which board that I want to burn this firmware to. There is a huge list of a selection of devices that you can upload your program to. Since I have an Arduino Uno board, I'll select that one. And I know that my Arduino is connected to COM port 29. I'll have that selected. And then I just hit upload. Keep in mind that the first time you do this, it might take a while. The first upload is going to download all the required files and libraries straight from Arduino to your system. Once you do that, after the first step, you won't be needing to download that anymore. So the uploads will be a lot quicker, like this one. So now you can see that the LED is blinking just like what we programmed it to do. This is a very simple hello world on an Arduino board. What else can we do with this? A PLC can control devices, but can also communicate with other devices. The way it communicates is using SCADA protocols. The most common and popular SCADA protocol ever is called Modbus. I won't go too deep on what Modbus is on this video, but suffice me to say that there are four different data types that Modbus supports, and they are strictly aligned to the PLC data types that OpenPLC supports. So, on PLC side, we usually have digital inputs, digital outputs, analog inputs, and analog outputs. Those are the four different ways that a PLC can talk to the external world. On the Modbus side, you have all these four data types with different names, right? So digital inputs is called input status, digital outputs is called coils, analog inputs is called input registers, and memory slash analog outputs is a holding register. So let's take a look at Modbus in action. For me to be able to do that, I first need to reburn or recompile my PLC project on my Arduino board, but then select one of the Modbus options here on a dialog. For the Arduino Uno, I will select the Modbus RTU or ser serial version. The Modbus TCP is for boards that have either built-in Wi-Fi or Ethernet, or if you have an Arduino Uno with an Ethernet shield attached to it. So let's use just the serial version here. Um, here I can select which serial port I want to use for boards that have multiple serial or UART channels. The Uno only has one channel, so I keep that selected. Then I can select the baud rate. Let's go and select 115 200 that's the fastest option I have and the slave ID this is the address of the device on a serial network um, I can put whatever number I want let's just keep one for its simplicity and in case you have an RS-485 hardware you can also select a transmit pin that's not our case the Arduino board is directly connected to my PC over the USB cable so with those settings complete, I will just hit upload again to upload this new version of the firmware with Modbus enabled. All right, upload completed. Let's uh, close this. And now to communicate to my board, there, there are tons of Modbus applications for that, but I like to use one that is free and available on the internet called RMMS or Radzio Modbus Master Simulator. To connect to my board, uh, all I have to do is hit connection, settings, and then here I can select the Modbus protocol type that I want to use. As uh, we discussed previously, we need to select RTU for the serial version, 
And here I need to type my COM port, which is COM29. And the baud rate that I selected uh, when I was compiling the project, right? 115, 200. Everything else I can leave uh, as uh, default options and hit OK. Now I'll create a new data set. And on this data set, Radio Modbus will be querying my device to know the status of each input and output, right? As we discussed previously, I have all the four different types of Modbus data types here. I'll just select coil status because I want to take a look at the digital outputs and I will look at the first eight digital outputs, okay? Device ID is one. Now that I have everything set, I'll click connection, connect. And sure enough, I see one of the outputs here is going from zero to one and one to zero, right? And if you remember, that is QX0.3, right? That's the blink LED variable that we uh, wrote here in our program, 0 0.3. And you sure enough see that on Modbus, that that location is going up and down, right? On Radzu, I can even give it a name, call it Blinky LED, right? And that's it. I can use Modbus to communicate with my Arduino board and I have an OpenPLC project running on it. Very exciting. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to check out Patreon for some sponsoring options. Thank you.